I run a, a movement called Action for Happiness, and we're bringing together people from all around the world who share this conviction that, that happiness and well-being really matter. They should be priorities for each of us as individuals, but even more importantly, they should be the way we structure our relationships and our society. So we have tens of thousands of members and followers all around the world, people who are trying to put these ideas into practice in their daily lives, at home, for themselves, in their families, but also in their work in the community, in their role as a teacher or a business leader, all of us can make a difference. So I think we, we need to start with the question of what is it that makes for a good life? We're bombarded in modern society with so many misleading images of a good life. We're told it's about earning lots of money, having great vacations, um, being famous. Um, you know, there's all kind of unhelpful images of, of what really matters for, for well-being and for, for success in life. And actually, a definition I like is that well-being is about feeling good and functioning well. It's, a, it's an inner sort of emotional experience, but it's also about our interaction with the world around us. So one of the most important questions then is, what is it we can do to create a society where we have high levels of well-being? The, the, the really tragic fact is that over the last 50 or 60 years, our economy has grown and we've become richer, or at least some of us have become richer, um, but actually human happiness and human well-being in society has at best flatlined in that period. We have really been getting our priorities wrong. We actually have a lot of scientific understanding now about what really contributes to people's happiness and well-being. Uh, we have a framework called the 10 Keys to Happier Living. They go through sort of 10 different themes uh, about aspects that really matter from the research, but also from people's personal experiences. Some of those are perhaps what you might expect. Human relationships really matter, of course. Others are slightly more surprising. So giving to others um, is, a, is a really important contributor to our happiness. Having a sense of meaning and purpose, not competing and outdoing others, but feeling connected to and sort of part of a community with others. The best things in life aren't things. We're so often told that it's about having more and earning more and consuming more, but actually real lasting happiness and well-being are about our connections, our connections with other people, our connections with the sort of purpose in life, and also sort of connections with ourselves, that inner peace and acceptance that we so often get wrong and, and lack in our frenetic modern society. There are things that policy and politicians should be and, and can do to, to improve um, well-being. And so some of the things we looked at were that actually creating a stable economy um, and sort of ensuring high employment, those are much more important factors than actually growing the economy uh, at all costs. It's that stability that really matters. Um, when it comes to healthcare, we've got an obsession with illness and with physical health, and actually what we're lacking is a real focus on mental health. So many people are struggling with depression and anxiety. We should be doing much more to help create the conditions for people to, to cope with the, the stresses and strains of modern life. Um, also, we need to have a much greater focus on young people, especially in their earliest years and in our school systems. We don't need schools that are exam factories churning out only students that can pass exams. We need education to be about building the character and the skills and the sort of life skills, if you like, to be resilient and to succeed in life. At the moment, we've got our education priorities a bit upside down.